Adonai Elohim, Abba Father. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. And Lord, we lift our hands and surrender to you. For we've tried and failed ourselves. We can do nothing of ourselves. Our hope, our strength, our life is in you. And we ask for your forgiveness, for your mercies, your grace. As we repent for every word, thought, and deed we've done that's offended you. Every area of rebellion, stubbornness. Everything that we've touched in agreement with the voice of the stranger. We break every label off of us, Lord. We sever from every emotional attachment of people, places, and things. And we ask, Lord, that the anointing break every yoke and that your truth set us free. As you search us through, remove those things and take your rightful place in our spirit, soul, and body, and our flesh, and our thoughts, our words, our steps. That you'll take your rightful place, Lord, and establish your kingdom in us and through us, the divine nature, image and likeness, character of your Son, that we will be offsprings of the anointed one and his anointing. Grant us the wisdom, Master, that we may be about your business as your word goes forth to each and every one here, that by the stripes of Jesus you be made whole in spirit, soul, and in body. Loose each and every one here from any spirit of bondage, mind-binding spirits, spirits of fear, spirits of oppression, spirits of deception, carnal spirits, in the name of Jesus, and command those spirits to loose and to leave the people of God and go to the pit and not return, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Give somebody a hug and tell them this is your night. God is so good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Would you grab your Bibles and turn to Matthew 7? Matthew 7. <laughs> Matthew chapter 7. Are you willing to do whatever it takes? Hmm. <laughs> Praise God. You know, if you're not willing to do whatever it takes, you don't make it. Amen? How many of you know we're in a season that is tough? We have been, we talked about last days and, and did a series of teachings on the last days, and I encourage you to get that teaching package. It's awesome. And if you haven't, if you've seen the video yet about the uh, uh, What If video, DVD, we have them if you want one. I encourage you to get it and get an idea of what's happening. But, you know, we also talked about um, deadly covenants and what the enemy tries to get us to come in agreement with so it becomes a deadly covenant. Because we know that Jesus said he came to bring life and life more abundantly, but the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And he destroys many individuals because God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And in Matthew 7 and verse 13, would you read it with me, please? It says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. In other words, many who go the easy way. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. So understand something that there is, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Savior means he's rescuing you. Lord means he's Lord over your life. And there is a difference because many people just go to Jesus as Savior and never Lord. They've been Savior for an individual for 30 or 40 years, but never Lord. 
And when he becomes Lord over your life, you don't have a life. But the life he has for you is much greater than you could ever imagine. But the fear that the enemy brings doesn't want you to surrender your life. It wants you to have control over your life. And once you lose control over your life, more and more fear gets. Until you finally come to a place and get filled with the Spirit of God where you don't care whether you're dead or alive. Are you listening? Because there's a peace that surpasses all understanding that when you get filled with the Spirit of the living God, it's like, man, if this is death, I want it. Man, if this is what it's like to go home and this is just a little glimpse of what's happening when I get home, hallelujah, kick off the shoes and zip me up. I'm out of here. But in one aspect, it's kind of selfish because we want others to experience what we've experienced. Amen? Now, you can tell everybody about this experience. And, and one day they saw you as a humanite, and a week later they see you as an eternal light. And you're trying to tell them and explain this experience, and they're looking at you like you're weird. And you are. You're weird compared to the carnal realm. But in true reality, they're weird. <laughs> They must experience it. Amen? And one of the things that the enemy doesn't want to do is for people to experience it. There are many people who have received Jesus as Savior and never experienced God. That is a terrible thing. Because they became religious. And the only experiences they get is by reading the Word and getting revelation experience instead of visitation experience. But when the Lord visits you and touches you, there isn't anything more you want but more of him. Amen? So the enemy is always there trying to prevent you from going the right way. You know, if you think that accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and everything is going to be hunky-dory, forget it. Why? Because there's a process that God brings you through that is difficult, and that pathway is narrow. And the reason he does that is so that he can squeeze you out. In other words, take Egypt or the world out of you so he can put his heavenly kingdom in you. So the path starts where it's narrow and difficult. But he gives us grace. He gives us favor. He's there standing. You know, like when a child is brand new and born, it's always carried. It's fed. Its diapers are changed. That's why it's so fun hanging around with babies, baby Christians, because God shows them favor. You know? I mean, he just all of a sudden, man, he just does all kinds of stuff, visits them in dreams and visions. But those are ones that are truly wanting to know him. Not just accept Jesus as Savior, just to escape hell. But to accept him as Savior so that they might know him as Lord. There's a difference. So this pathway that you and I start on is narrow and difficult. But it's, you know, is it's so easy. I mean, everybody wants to take the easy way. That's human nature. Take the easy way. You know, when you go to somebody's house, you'd rather cut through the front lawn instead of go up the driveway. You know? It's, it's e well, you know, it's easier. You know? I mean, who wants to make five trips back and forth to the car to carry groceries? I'll carry them in my teeth. I'll carry them under my arms. Everything. It's easier to make as least trips as possible, right? <laughs> the problem is, is if one of them rips and busts, and then I got to pick it all up, and I should have taken the narrow path instead of the wide or broad path. Amen? Let's go a little further. <clears throat> 